All right, well, hello everyone and welcome to the May 28th Hadley School Committee meeting. Um, here we are already at the end of the month. It's unbelievable. <laughs> June is coming up pretty quick. Um, so I would like to ask if there is a motion to call the meeting to order. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Let's go. So no. we do have to update so the call to order to our new uh, committee, uh, committee member, Ethan Kersey, who is uh, replacing Keith uh, Replacing Keith And I'm sorry, I'm getting some back. Uh, there we go, feedback. I'll turn my volume down as well. Um, so welcome, Ethan. We're really thrilled to have you on board and uh, look forward to working with you. Um, wondering if we could just take one moment again to have Ethan just give you a chance to introduce yourself since this is your first school committee meeting uh, with us. We did get to hear a little bit from you and about you last time we met, but if you could just take a few minutes to tell us a little bit about your background, that'd be great. Sure. Uh, this is, I guess, just about year three living in Hadley. Uh, my wife grew up here and her family's been here their entire lives. Um, I uh, have been in education for about 15 years, uh, working mostly as a college counselor, but have worked in higher ed, secondary ed. Um, and then on top of that, I have two young kids in the school system here. Cole is about to be five, about to go to kindergarten. Parker just turned three and, and will be heading off to preschool this year. So um, I'm excited to, to be involved. Um, I'm looking forward to the, the opportunity, to the challenges. Um, but uh, obviously education is something that I'm passionate about. Um, so this just seemed like a, 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 a natural transition when we get, when we kind of got settled back here. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Well, we are too, Ethan. Glad, so glad to have you on board and, um, thrilled to hear, you know, with your kids and the ages, just having, um, additional representation from, uh, folks at the elementary school as well. So welcome aboard. Thank you. Great. Okay. With that, we're going to move to public comment. Um, Annie, I haven't done public comment online. Is this a raise your hand and we call on you or how do we do it? That would be most helpful to me rather than running through. So if people, okay. if you have your video off and you want to do public comment, if you could turn your video on, raise your hand. There should be a, a virtual raise hand option. At least I know I have one over in the participants pane. Um, and I know we have a number of folks who may or may not want to make public comment. So if you would like to make public comment, if you could please raise your digital hand um, and I will call on you and we'll just go down the list. Um, typically, if we were doing this face to face, we do have policy around the time limits. Um, and I, while I don't have the statement in front of me, it's about five minutes. Uh, and so I would just ask that you respect the time for the meeting, but I, we are anxious to hear from everybody. Um, I don't yet see anybody with their hand raised, I, but I don't know if I can see that, Annie. You might only be able to see it. I, and I don't believe I'm seeing that. So again, if you are trying oh, to, oh, I there's see one. one now. Okay. Yay. Okay. You saw it too. Good. Andrea, um, I'm, I think I can unmute you and, uh, Welcome to the meeting. Let's see here. Uh, I cannot unmute you. You will have to do it yourself. I think I can. Did I do it? And Annie, you can make Heather a co-host if you desire by yes. right-clicking on her name. Did I, I think I did something wrong. Give me a Perfect. second. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to stop, Andrea. I am going to stop doing whatever I'm doing. Holy I think you, you unmuted and then Annie muted you. So Andrea, if you could unmute again, please. Yeah. That's, I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> there we go. Okay. We still can't hear you. We see you. We see you talking, Andrea. But um, and it says that you're unmuted, but we cannot hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe I can look up whether there's a phone in option. Um, and in the meantime, perhaps there's someone else who would like to speak. Thank you, Humera. I was uh, just Andrew. gonna say maybe she could um, just yeah. type it type it in the chat while you um, did but, find a phone option. Yeah, so we'll go to the next. If there is another person who would like to make public comment, please raise your hand. Your digital hand. Okay, so 
Um, why don't we, as an as an adjustment to the agenda, if that's possible, because I want to make sure Andrea has um, the floor to be able to speak in public comment. Can we shift public comment to be um, after uh, one of the presentation discussion items? And I think that uh, a presentation discussion item of interest is um, graduation plans. And uh, yes, Andrea's, <laughs> and maybe by covering those topics, Annie, um, then as part of Andrea's comments, uh, and she's got the phone in option, um, we can be sure that uh, she is able to hear those plans and then still have public comment opportunity. Is that okay? That is. And what I've just done, Himera, I did send you the invitation that has the phone numbers in it. I also sent it to Emma. I sent it to you too. I, I, I don't know. It was in our calendar invite and I already okay. have it to Andrea. Perfect. All right. right. Let me go back here. Okay. So um, as an adjustment to the agenda, um, we would like to make sure, I think I'd like to cover 4B first, which is commissioner's updates uh, regarding summer school reentry and graduation, and in particular focus on um, graduation and the acknowledgement of our 28 seniors that we have, um, the class of 2020, uh, and just talk about the plans that are currently in place, um, the ideas that have been raised and some of the challenges that we face in terms of um, following protocol uh, of the state, but also wanting to obviously do everything that we can that is within those protocol. Uh, so Annie, I'd like to turn it over to you to um, outline some of the plans that you and the, um, the administration staff have currently uh, have planned. So I uh, sent another email today to the entire community and just to give folks a sense of the ways in which we, we are already uh, trying to recognize the class of 2020. Uh, one of those is, of course, the senior send off and a huge thank you to Jamie Beth Photography for that project. Uh, they gave freely of their time. Those are the graduation pictures that were uh, graduation pictures, the cap and gown pictures that were made available to every family, senior pictures, and now they're in a, a place called the Senior Send-Off uh, on the web. And that was shared again as a link for the entire community to take a look at, they're beautiful. Also uh, in terms of recognition, uh, the tribute video uh, that was made by the, the Hopkins Academy faculty and staff for the class of 2020. We are looking at for class night, for the seniors doing something that is virtual, and that does not mean necessarily virtual synchronous. That, that could very well mean that we are taking every speech and the awards, that people are individually recording that. We create one then um, final product that we can post on the website, send to students and families, and ask Hadley Media, of course, if they could also present that for us. Um, and Class night typically recognizes underclassmen as well for some awards. Those awards for we would do in the fall. Anything virtual would just focus on the seniors. We have the senior parade, which uh, members of the class, advisors, the administration and the administrative assistants and public safety, we are extremely grateful to them, have put in an inordinate amount of work to try to get this right. Um, and so I'm very grateful for all Chief Spanknable has got done, Chief Mason has done, folks at the fire department, Emma, I think you're at the fire department right now, all that you all are doing, thank you so much, um, to try to make this um, enjoyable, but also to make this safe. We waited for the guidance from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education regarding graduation. I understand how the timing of events may feel very confusing to members of the community. And if it's okay, I just wanna explain how we got here. And I'm not asking anybody to agree with it, but I just wanna explain how we got here. We have held fast to the idea that the most responsible thing to do is to wait for and adhere to the guidance given by the Department of Public Health, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, and the Executive Office, the Governor's Office. 
The Commissioner of Education let superintendents know the guidance on graduation would be forthcoming. He said that around May 8th when there was a letter that went out to families. We received that guidance. He wrote it on Thursday, March, May 21st, or it's dated that date. We received it on Friday, May 22nd. That guidance is very, very clear that anything that is in person before July 19th, up until July 18th, anything in person should be done virtually or under very, very strict social distancing. And the example he provided was a car parade. We thought, because it is my understanding from the faculty class advisors, that the preference of most, the majority of the class of 2020 was to have an event that felt as traditional as possible and to the extent possible brought everyone together. And boy, do I understand that. I really understand that. I miss the seniors. I'm not gonna pretend that I'm going to be as sad and heartbroken as their parents, but I am sad and heartbroken. This is part of the reason I'm in this gig. This is the best part of the year. So we thought that we could propose something that would allow people to be together in one space and also hit that mark of strict social distancing. We proposed what would have been almost a drive-in graduation. And I thank so much all the folks who were brainstorming and thinking, thanking to a resident and community member and retired teacher who gave us the idea of contacting three county fairgrounds because it could have been big enough perhaps to pull this off and we could have convinced them that we could make it safe enough. Even though we had a detailed map, we had people remaining in their cars. We had a lot of feet between cars because we assumed that when a student's name was called, they would step out of their car and their family would want to take pictures. We had nobody handing anything off and students not ever getting more than an arm's length away from their car. It was not approved by the Northampton Board of Health. I understand that because all they have to do is read the guidance and say, this, this doesn't adhere to the guidance. And I understand that. I'm not saying I know what their thinking was. I can also understand if they questioned, well, what happens when people don't follow the guidance? Uh, today, people, there, there have been pictures of other events in the area. No matter how tightly people plan something, people who attend may decide to do things that deviate from the plan. And that's understandable because they're excited and they want to celebrate. And that happens because people are excited and they miss each other and they want to celebrate. That also, and I understand the Board of Health's position, that is really unnerving to, to folks who are still very afraid of transmission. And the bottom line is it's not about opinion, it was just about guidelines. So that was not approved. What Mr. Beck will be asking seniors now is their thoughts on having an in-person event after July 18. Of course, it's important for people to realize the mere, that mere fact in doing that, we are excluding at least one, if not more than one member of the graduating class because their obligations in post-secondary mean they can't be here at that time. That's an important thing to, to think about. So, but in-person events that people have heard about and that are being talked about in other schools are happening under those strict social distancing guidelines still, but they cannot happen until after July 18th. Or a virtual option that may include subject to any approved, subject to approvals from Board of Health, and we need to think carefully, that may include something involving students coming by and picking up a diploma at Hopkins so that they can have a picture taken. But again, it's so important to be, I'm gonna say it, it's so important to be overly cautious. And I'm gonna say this too. I know that there are parents watching who are also thinking right now about the fall and, and need to know that they can trust people in the school department, no matter how hard it gets to do what's expected for the benefit of public health. So that's where we are at. The next step would be to get feedback from seniors. And I think the school committee was looking to have a conversation 
about ideas and possibilities and the things we need to balance for the benefit of public understanding to hear from the community as well. Um, and uh, so I think that's that's where you all want to go next and, and I will listen and only add when I'm, when I'm called upon, but where we're at, we had proposed something. Boy, we worked hard thinking we could make it happen. Those guidelines are strict. Yeah. We have a couple other ideas, but keep in mind, even with those ideas, in person after the fact doesn't mean that by default you've excluded um, a member of the class. So I'll leave it at that and I'll wait for the chair to call on me if you need something um, from this and I'll take notes. Thank you, Annie. And um, before I just move to, I, I see some folks that want to, um, maybe we can go back to public comment. The one thing I just want to add on this is that I think you'll hear this from all of us as school committee members that, you know, we're right there in the community with you, right? We have children in the schools, some of whom are going to be seniors, some of whom are seniors. I mean, that's, we're right there with you. We're thinking about these things. We're unsure about things just like you are. But the thing that I don't think any of us really want to do is, um, and we haven't traditionally, is engage in a back and forth on social media. We have not, um, as a practice, um, as elected officials, represented the schools on our personal uh, Facebook or any social media accounts. So the lack of a response on a Facebook uh, thread is not due to uh, ignoring or not seeing what's going on. It's that we, we have not engaged in a conversation that um, is taking place on social media. Any one of us, please reach out to us by phone, by you know text, we'll reach out to you. Uh, and many of you have called uh, the folks that I'm looking at on the screen here. And I know uh, that you know that we're willing to talk, we want to talk, um, and sometimes we don't have the answers, but we want you to know we are listening to you, but we'd rather talk to you or email you and not take this um, onto a social media platform where uh, that's just not really, to me, the, the role that I signed up for. I signed up for talking to parents, working with parents, and working as a committee. So um, I just want to put that out there, and, and I guess part of that's my personal opinion too, but part of that I think you'll see backed up by a Massachusetts Association for School Committee members where, you know, we're, when you look at the Hadley uh, website, the Town of Hadley website and our listing, there's a phone number there, and that's, that's for a reason because we want you to know you can reach us at any time. Um, so I'm just going to put that out there as a, um, I'm thrilled that we've got some folks here that want to talk with us and bring this and you've brought it to our attention. Um, but I just wanted to bring that out. Annie, you had something. I'm sorry. I do need, someone just joined and all I can see is a phone number. And just for the public record, I have to record who's it's here. Probably Andrea. <laughs> oh, is that? Oh, good. That's okay. easy. All right. Thank you so much. Sorry. <laughs> well, we knew she was calling. So. All right, so um, I'm going to ask the other members if they want to say anything on this topic before I shift to public comment. I um, thank you for that uh, preface, Annie. Um, I, uh, at the last school committee meeting, we hadn't even broached the topic, so I, uh, I was not at all aware of uh, Goings on, or decision making, or our plans, or even the commissioner's uh, guidelines until this weekend when I became pulled into a private uh, social media thread um, and um, started my due diligence process uh, after that and was eager to come to this school committee meeting to learn more. Um, I also, um, what I've been able to do yesterday was our um, CES board meeting. And as you all know, CES is comprised of all, many school districts in the region, a school committee member from every member district is involved. And I posed the question that I was hearing a lot of parents say, which is how can other communities be holding graduations despite the commissioner's guidelines? I didn't have an answer for that. I, I honestly was perplexed, just as perplexed as them. And what I learned from those communities was that they had their plans in place and announced before the commissioner's 
guidelines had come out. And uh, that made a lot of sense to me. I don't know if any districts have developed plans since the commissioner guidelines have come out, um, but it is a very confusing issue to see, a very emotional one. If I were in a senior household, I'd be very upset seeing the front page of um, newspapers and seeing photos in what looks like a real regular graduation. And I think no matter what, we have to imagine that when people are calling it graduation, they're framing it as graduation, but actually it'll never be a graduation the kind that we've experienced in the past. And there's a, a mourning and a grief that comes with that. I was really looking forward to sending off this year's seniors. They, they, I've known them since they were babies. My son was a part of that group. So it's a particularly hard thing for me. And I support the school in um, looking for creative ways and the opportune time to do what's safe because that is a, an important priority. That's what I'll say. Thanks, Humara. Paul or Tara or Ethan, is there anything else you'd like to add before? Well, you're on mute. Hey, Heather, can I say something? This is Paul. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Oh, sure. I uh, just want to say thanks to Annie and Andy for framing this. One thing, too, I will note there's been some conversations that I've had with, with folks about uh, what we can do to um, get some decorations out in the school. I know there's signs and there's on the marquee, there's some, but I think we could do a bit more. So, working with uh, Annie and Brian, there's a small group of us, uh, some juniors, we're trying to keep it to a small group. We're going to do some decorations tomorrow. We've we uh, received Brian's approval. So uh, prior to the parade, which I think starts around 5.30 tomorrow, hopefully the rain holds off, uh, there's going to be a group of us going out and doing some uh, decorating on the ground. So uh, hopefully it'll look all nice and, uh, you know, have a nice send off for folks as they start the parade. Thanks, Paul, for adding that. Anything else from uh, Tara? You want to say something? Um, no, I, I kind of echo what everybody said thus far that, you know, I think the priority is making sure that whatever happens follows um, recommended guidelines and is really safe for our students and community. And I still think that, you know, our administration will get something together that will be really, really special um, for the students given, you know, this time of kind of uncertainty. And it's, you know, it not to minimize at all graduation, but there, there's so many different areas where people are just not able to carry on their lifestyles the way that they would wish to. And it's, it's really hard and unfortunate, but I, I do believe that given this time that the Hadley district can still put together something that is really special for these students at this time, but in, in a very safe manner. That's Thanks, Sarah. All right, um, I'm going to move then to public comment. And Andrea, you have the floor. No, we got to unmute your phone line. Hold on one second. Annie's got to do that. There we go. Okay, Andrea. I'm unmuted. Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Do you, are you hearing a lot of feedback? I am. Um, Tara, if you could mute your line again. Thanks. Go ahead, Andrea. Um, this is really awkward to talk with all the feedback. If there's anyone who's not on mute, uh, thank you for putting yourselves on mute. I think the only one not on mute is your, your online, Andrea. Yeah, yeah, your computer. Mute your computer if you're on the phone, Andrea. There that we go. Help you. Okay, how's this, guys? Do you hear me now? Perfect. <laughs> Thank you for all the tech, uh, the glitches. I just felt as a parent of a senior, I really wanted to um, advocate for, for my daughter, Emma, and for the class, that the 20 students. And I have so much gratitude for what is going to happen. And I'm so excited about the parade tomorrow. And I think um, all the signs that are going to be the decorations is going to be wonderful and the photography has been awesome i have absolutely read up on all the guidelines as annie talked about with the massachusetts association of school committees so i'm very well aware that 
we really can't have any ceremonies prior to July 19th. So I did my research to see what other towns are doing. Um, I know Amherst and my husband who works in Ludlow have a very similar format where they just have 10 to 15 minute periods where the students put on their cap and gown. They have their appointments, they get their diploma, they take their picture and they walk back in their car. Um, some of the other towns, uh, Turner's, South Hadley Frontier, they're all waiting until after July and August. I like the idea of giving the students feedback because I think it is important knowing when students are going to be leaving early that we have all 28 students considering it is such a small class. And I really think getting their feedback is important. I just want to make sure we're doing something, but by the sounds of it, as me coming on in later after hearing the Indiana School Committee, it sounds like there will be something. So I, I feel a big sense of relief with that. So thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea. Appreciate that. Um, and yes, I think uh, this this uh, process of, th and I appreciate the research of finding out what others are doing, whether they're doing a scheduled event like Amherst did uh, or something else uh, waiting. Um, so really appreciate you um, bringing that up. It's just one okay. thing if I could clarify with this. Um, I know, uh, Hugh Mary, you had talked about how some uh, school committees said that the deciding factor was they um, had their, they um, made their plans before the commissioner's guidance. And I know you're not saying this, but I really want to clarify it for the community. I do not believe in any way that the solution is um, ever to act and ask for forgiveness afterwards when it comes to public health. And I think what we're seeing is these plans, what we had tried to do is say, is there a way we can bring them all together, right? So we waited for the guidance with the hope, with the hope that that guidance might signal there was a way we could do that. And it didn't, but it said, well, with strict social distancing, so we put together the strictest plan we could because we were still shooting for the Holy Grail. Because the bottom line is everybody who's doing something, they are either doing no ceremony. They can't control for the fact that some people of the public go out and cluster and get their picture taken in the newspaper. The superintendent doesn't plan for that. They don't want that to happen. But they either had this Ludlow example of the appointments or they're waiting. But I don't know of any of my colleagues who just said, forget about it, we're gonna violate this guidance now that we've read it. There's, there's nobody to my knowledge that is flagrantly violating the guidance. Sometimes people group, which is, if I can say this now too, for those folks who feel like we've been a little too police-like <laughs> in our emails about the parade, that's precisely the reason. The, the school department should be the last department doing anything that the public feels is potentially compromising public health. And that's why those have been so, stay apart, please stay here, don't do this, you can't get out of the car. So I do, I do wanna apologize for parents who feel like this feels like a giant no fest, but it's just in, in a desire to ensure that we're taking care of people, right? That we're taking care of people who feel vulnerable still in the population, we're still too afraid to go to the grocery store. We don't, we don't want to look like we have a disregard for any citizens of Hadley's health. I just wanted to clarify that. I know um, I didn't want the public to hear something that I'd like, oh, if we'd only beat the commissioners of the pot, we could have done whatever we wanted, because that, that's not. Thanks, Annie. Okay, since we've moved to public comment, um, and maybe some folks joined us after I, I mentioned this, if you would like to make a comment as part of public comment, please raise your digital hand. Uh, you should see it in the participant pane. Um, mine appears at the bottom as a blue hand <laughs> that says raise hand uh, right next to the yes checkbox. And so um, Andrea had her hand raised and uh, participated in public comment. Is there anyone else who would like to make a public comment? Umera. Thank you, Heather. Um, it's six o'clock. I want to make a comment as a parent and community member. And that is, um, despite all the struggles uh, around graduation, I don't want to lose sight of the fact that we have an incredible class of 2020 
who's been through a lot in life and is uh, exceptional in my mind in every way. They have participated in incredible leadership opportunities at the school. They've really put forth their voice and made the school experience um, what they needed it to be and what our community needs it to be. Um, they're graduating into a world that is even more ambiguous now than it usually is. And as I work with college students across the nation and at Stanford and work with students who are graduating from college, who are facing 20% in unemployment, I feel a little bit of relief knowing that many of them are going into their college years and have four years to imagine their possibilities and hopefully enter an economy that is um, rebounded. I don't think I'll have the opportunity to congratulate them and also tell them that they need to know that we have their back, that many seniors graduate and never know that their community has their back. We are your first people. We are in your corner no matter what. So add us on LinkedIn. Mine are contacts. Uh, tell us your dreams so we can open doors for you. We are here for you. Um, I know I am personally, and I, I'm sure I speak on behalf of um, most anyone in Hadley when I say that. So congratulations. Thanks, Humara. Definitely echo that. <laughs> Is there anyone else who would like to make public comment? I'm just giving folks a moment to find the raise hand button or think if they want to say anything. Okay. Seeing none, uh, I'm going to move ahead then with uh, our agenda. And we're going to go back to the original 4A topic, which is the governor's updates regarding reopening. Annie? Yes. So the governor has. Uh, put us into phase one. Schools were always considered essential, but as you know, students have not been in school since Friday, March 13th. And the governor strongly suggested telework to every extent possible. So our buildings have been closed to the public, just like the town's buildings. Town Hall, I believe is opening June 1st um, and bringing employees back June 1st. Um, so we, uh, as part of reopening, even though we were considered essential, the vast majority of folks have been working remotely. Thankfully, we have very few 12 month employees. So implementing and adhering to the guidance from CDC and OSHA uh, is relatively straightforward for us. And we'll have time over the summer to make sure that we are where we need to be. Uh, when we need to be there. And that um, that kind of goes to that other topic on the commissioner's updates with re-entry. So I want to really make it clear, there are all kinds of things happening in different communities. Some communities have task force, some communities are talking about this. We have a team, a leadership team that's been meeting twice a week since the closure. It consists of all administrators in the district and um, Hadley Education Association union representation from the elementary school and Hopkins Academy. As a leadership team, we said, do we start reentry planning now? And it was our consensus that that was not a good use of people's time in this moment, given the fact that we have so much to do right now, like graduation, like ending the school year, like reweighting grades because of uh, the difference in remote learning the second half of the year. Also, the commissioner has said, not only will there be guidance, but he has said, and I quote, it will be 80% prescriptive. Eight out of 10 things will be dictated to you. So they were very clear that spending a lot of time making plans and then finding out that all they planned, they didn't have a choice about, did not seem like a good use of time. And again, over 50% of this team, or at least 50% of this team, are people who are teaching full-time as well right now and happening. 
The commissioner said again that he anticipates having that guidance out probably about mid-June, um, at which point I we will bring together a representative task force within the schools representing employees, representing health within the schools. We will be seeking feedback from parents. We'll be seeking feedback from students. We'll be obviously coordinating with our local board of health and the town, we're a department within the town. But this is definitely a place where we are going to wait for guidance. We're going to wait for guidance. And I, and, and because there to me is very little benefit to presenting people with a range of what ifs when we have no indication right now of what that might be. We will have guidance within probably about three weeks. And as soon as we have that, I'll send, I will keep up the weekly email during the summer. Some people are probably like, oh gosh, I thought I'd get a break from that. But no, your inboxes will be full. So when I have it, you will have it, as well as what we're thinking about next steps. And of course, that will time with our next school committee meeting. And that will be a really important time for school committee to be thinking about what should some of our guiding principles be. So I'm gonna give you an example. An example of that might be if the guidance prohibits 100% of students being present, is the priority to ensure equitable access to face-to-face -face learning for all students, or should access to face-to-face -face learning be proportionate to need, which could be defined as age, disability, or some other need? It's an example of a question that I'd very much want the school committee to be publicly talking about, assuming that we even have this is what I mean by wait for the guidance. The guidance might say, access to face-to-face -to -face education must be proportionate to student need, defined as X. So when I get it, the public will know, the school committee will discuss it at a public meeting. And I know it does feel like, well, we really should know tomorrow what we're doing in September. And as I have to say over and over again, I am, I am borderline like Sheldon on Big Bang Theory. Like I need certainty in my life. I like spreadsheets. I like data. I like facts. I do not like ambiguity. I can't stand this. I want certainty and I want to know what's going to happen tomorrow. And I've had to reconcile myself to the fact that I simply can't. I can't. And so when we have information, I'll say what everybody's, the public hasn't heard, but the school committee has heard and certainly members of the school department now. We have committed to being credible. And that is defined as we share what we know, we acknowledge what we do not know, and we follow through on what we say. And even when the demand for us to provide information is extreme and great because people hate uncertainty, we do not talk about things that we, we don't have the facts for because that just sets us up to disappoint people even more and it creates more confusion in the future. So that's where we're at with re-entry, with reopening. Our 12-month employees uh, are returning to work to the extent that they are comfortable. Telework is still strongly encouraged by the governor. A number of 12-month employees will continue to work from home. They have every right to do that. It's actually recommended. Um, and summer school, we do not have the guidance for that yet. Um, at this point, we are planning for virtual summer school. But if that changes, parents, um, uh, certainly uh, students who typically receive summer programming, will hear from the Director of Student Services, Pam Haywood. She's done an excellent job of communicating um, with parents as soon as she has information. So that's all I have for reopening and reentry. Thanks, Annie. And yeah, I think that covered um, reopening, summer school, reentry. We've covered graduation. Mm -hmm. And just to add to that, you know, I think um, we are all committed to communicating. So as soon as, you know, whether it's through the website, through your emails, through phone calls, whatever needs to happen, um, it's clear that especially with something as important as uh, how are we doing this in the fall? <laughs> what are we doing? Um, we're committed to making sure that 
where we can communicate facts that we do. And mm-hmm. where we don't know, we'll say we don't know. Um, but we're not going to speculate about what may or may not be because that's that just will drive you crazy. So, okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to move on then to topic 4C, a reduction in force at the elementary school of one full-time employee uh, in unit A due to sixth grade in that uh, they had three classes uh, and they are leaving the elementary school and moving up into Hopkins. Annie? Yes, so this is not related in any way to uh, COVID-19 or the uncertainty of the FY21 budget. The FY21 budget is still uncertain. Town meeting will not even happen until June. And there's a tri-board meeting about uh, the town's budget that will happen a week from Friday on Friday, June 3rd. Um, However, so this reduction in force we knew was coming because we knew that we had sixth grade, three classes graduating. And so there will be one uh, less unit A member as a result of that. Okay. Any questions from the committee? Okay. okay. So, well, this is Paul. Uh, given the, the way the seventh grade works in eighth grade, obviously we're not looking to augment any uh, teachers in, in those grades, in that grade, in seventh grade. So at this point in time, because it's not just about a um, union contract, it's about mass general law and statute. And the statute says that teachers must, that educators must be notified by June 15th if there's a possibility of reduction in force. So the notice has to happen because right now, Paul, we have no idea what the fall is going to look like. So even it's not just, it's not simply a numbers game. It's also a, we don't know what the fall is going to look like. And given the position the town is in right now, the town has had to cut original budget requests from all departments significantly. There are a number of departments that have requested positions that to my understanding will not be filled. Um, I am, it's my understanding. So it's my understanding that there has been a request for at least a position um, in one of our public safety departments uh, that cannot be filled. You know that we are in a town that has a 100% volunteer board of health. There are no paid employees in the board of health and we're in the middle of the pandemic. Um, so the town is the town is doing a great job of being supportive, of being judicious, of, of really, they have a great strategy. But um, I think that it, it is the responsible thing to do at this point to say, we're gonna follow the statutory guideline of doing the reduction in force by June 15th. If something were to change, then we would post a position accordingly. But I, I, I don't think, and especially the school committee has also talked about our responsibilities to be a team player with the town. And when I know that there are departments in need of positions that are not being filled, everything we ask for really has to be necessary. Um, it just has to be necessary, I'll leave it at that. Well, I think we've, we've got a history of being, you know, fiscally responsive to class sizes, just given, you know, the small nature of some of our class sizes and some come along that are larger that we've had to make adjustments in the past. Um, so while, you know, unfortunate, this isn't new, um, but I, you know, I appreciate that we're able to monitor this such that should a larger class be coming through the elementary school, that one of our areas of attention is making sure that if we need to add uh, or adjust accordingly for the number of classes that we've done that. Um, and I think we want to continue to monitor for that. So, um, you have a hand, I think, I don't know if you, did you? Did, Paula, did you have a question? No, no, thanks for the answer. I appreciate it. Sorry, I was talking to Paul Christophero. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. Hi, how are you? Hi. Um, so I'm speaking um, as a community member and not as a teacher. Um, so I'm just moving out of a different room and the daughter who's getting inducted into an honor society simultaneously. Um, but um, one thing that I was, I think along the lines of like what Paul was saying, I guess, one thing that I'm wondering, I mean, um, 
I mean, obviously, you never want to lose any staff members. Um, you know, when I totally respect exactly everything that Annie is saying, and I totally understand that. Although one thing I'm wondering if the school committee is considering like as along the lines of what Paul said, which is, you know, um, I think that, you know, maybe there's a lot of uncertainty and ambiguity, um, with the fall coming up. And I think it was just, I mean, I joined cause I wanted to kind of hear like, if the if the resources are needed, you know, are we going to consider, you know, bringing someone back or you know, opening up a position or whatever have you? Um, because you know, obviously, it's you know a concern, you know, for the children. And again, I'm not speaking as a teacher; I'm speaking as a community member. Um, you know, you know, a concern, a deep concern for the kids. And I think that um, you know, all hands on deck are going to be very, very important. While I totally understand you cannot justify a classroom position with no classroom <laughs> and there's cuts in other budgets. I get it. You know, um, I just, I was glad to hear that Paul had just made mention of the fact that like, you know, there is, there is a lot of uncertainty as Annie said too. And, um, you know, uh, you know, a reduction in force by one person, you know, seems, seems small. Um, um, and we want to do our part for the town for sure. Um, it's just, uh, you know, I, I'm glad to hear that the school committee and Annie too, anybody is like considering, you know, what if that person is needed? What if a person is needed? Not that person, a person, um, you know, so it's good to kind of know that, you know, it's kind of on the radar, just a statement more than a question really. Yeah. Thank you, Paula. And yes, I think um, just given the nature of our budget and how tied it is to um, FTEs, class sizes, services, the, the direction from the town, what can and can't be supported, um, while this is a decision being made now um, due to timeline uh, and protocol, that that doesn't mean it remains that way all the time. We, we would absolutely reevaluate as we need to when we're given direction about this fall and we realize either we do or don't need something. I, that's that's going to be part of it. Um, but Annie, is there anything else you'd like to add on this? No. no. Okay. Well, well said. Well said. I might I might add. Thank you, Paula. All right. Um, I'm going to move then to the possibility of the one twelfth budget, which I'm assuming means uh, a reduction or something, <laughs> a division. Well, uh, not. Probably not. So keep in mind. And also, I want to correct something which would have come up at Tribor. I want to do two things. I rudely did not let the public know. Jane Nevin Smith is with us. She is a recently elected select board member. She is also the liaison to the um, school committee from the select board. So it's an important thing for the public to know. And I believe Jane just reminded me that the tri board is Wednesday, um, June 3rd, not or somebody thankfully did, not Friday. I was thinking when I saw that, I'm like, wow, they must really not want me to go. I mean, who makes a meeting on Friday at 5.30? So that's good. It's Wednesday at 5.30. Uh, the 112 budget town meeting currently is scheduled. Um, and again, if I make an error, Jane, I do invite you into the chat or to, to let Heather know that you can correct it. Uh, my understanding is that the town is asking us to hold both June 18th and June 20th as possible dates for annual town meeting. There is no budget until there is a town meeting. So we need a quorum at town meeting in order for it to even happen. And then of course, the budget needs to pass. The entire omnibus budget needs to pass. If for some reason there is not a quorum, if things weren't passed, or if the state legislature does not have its numbers sorted out, there's a chance that many, many communities are looking at a 112th budget. And um, that does not look like, it's not as big of a problem for the school department. This works out well because our major expenses are of course our faculty and staff and those expenses don't occur until after the summer. Um, and so, so actually it's not for the school department, it isn't our entire budget divided by 12, and that's our budget for June. It's actually Chris, our business manager, ran July 2019 expenses, um, and then we adjusted 
for increase and presented that with some additional funds to David as part of the 112th package um, for the school department. We did make sure we had room for uh, PPE for, uh, for other things that we'll need to take into consideration before the start of the school year. So that's where we are at the budget. I strongly encourage everyone in town, please, uh, if you're a registered voter in Hadley, um, as soon as you know, uh, we, as soon as the date is determined for town meeting, please, please, please um, show up. 112 budgets are no fun. They really keep things stuck. All right, thank you. And I know there will be more information about the, the town meeting, the exact date, the protocol around that, um, how, how it's conducted. So we'll make sure that folks have that information as um, the select board is able to finalize those plans. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and welcome, Jane. Yeah, it is. I did say hello at the very beginning, but I think it was before we started. So we're really thrilled to have you on board. Congratulations again um, on your election. And uh, glad to have you as a liaison with the schools. Um, we've really appreciated working with the select board and the finance uh, committee um, as a means to really bring together kind of all of the initiatives. And I can tell you that, like, personally, it's helped me in understanding just um, the entire lay of the land and knowing that, you know, we're in it with everybody. And so uh, understanding where police and fire and, um, you know, the senior center and initiatives such as the, the library, all of those stand within the town. We cover those in finance committee, in the tri-board uh, with finance committee. So it's very helpful. All right, I'm gonna to move to applying any stimulus to fiscal year 21. This is topic E. Okay, so this I have on the agenda because it's my understanding that I believe where we left it, although there's another tri-board meeting and the warrant hasn't been finalized, is it may be that also there is a um, tech, a capital article for technology for the schools as part of the warrant for town meeting. We do know that we'll receive something called CARES funding. The schools can anticipate uh, CARES funding in the amount of probably, I believe our amount is about $48,000. Schools have the option of applying for that CARES funding in FY20 or applying for it in FY21. We will apply for CARES funding in FY21 because that's where the greatest amount of uncertainty is. I have spoken with the town administrator and um, similar to uh, when we had ARA funding back when everything fell apart in 2008, to the extent that we can refrain from using those funds for recurring costs, that's much better for the town. We use it for a recurring cost and then in fiscal year 22, those funds aren't there. That will spike the demand for local contribution to the town in fiscal year 22. We presume that we may need to use that for perhaps enhanced cleaning, perhaps PPE. Again, we need to wait for that guidance. But if we are able, and it, the same is true of other stimulus funds, if we are certainly able to um, invest that ourselves in tech, thereby freeing up that money for the town, we would absolutely do that. So as we get the guidance, we will apply for the CARES funding when we get the guidance so we know that we have it. And when we have that guidance, we'll bring this back to the school committee for recommendations on how best to deploy those funds. Um, and yeah, I think that sums that up. There was one other piece about, oh, with the tech article, just so people understand, the article is an authorization to borrow. So if it is passed on town meeting floor, if the select board determines that it should go on the warrant and it is passed on town meeting floor, that does not mean if folks are worried, great, we're gonna spend this money on this, but they get federal funds in, in you know, later in the summer, why do we do that? Um, it means that the town has an authorization to borrow. And if for some reason they did not need to, they don't have to, right? So it's not, the vote doesn't mean oh my gosh, um, it's spent right then. So that's, and I don't know if there will be additional stimulus money. We'll see what other packages come out um, from the federal government. That's great. Thanks, Annie. 
Any questions from folks on that? I do have a question. Um, mm -hmm. I like how you're thinking, Annie, around PPP and any kind of outfitting of the school in case there are interactions, face-to-face -face interactions that need to happen. Um, I also really appreciate the idea of using it for tech and freeing up that funding that the town wouldn't have to spend. I wonder if funding can also be used for um, professional development. And I say that because I know our, I'm really proud of our um, mm -hmm. how our school has responded to the opportunity and the requirement or the challenge of teaching online. Um, this is a situation they've never been in before and they're leaning in and learning how. And I know there are great resources that now can be even more accessible online. So can we use that funding to get some of the best um, professional development folks to provide our faculty with um, insights and knowledge? Yes, uh, we can use the funding right now. Uh, is my understanding of it, and I can't quote the or the request for proposal verbatim, any COVID-related expense. It's very, very loose. It is subject to proportionate share. So that means that I do, uh, I'm required under federal law to have conversations with eligible um, private institutions. And so it is subject to proportionate share. Similar to our Title I funding, similar to our other funding we have, 240. But yes, any COVID-related expense. They purposely made it very flexible. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for asking that. That's great. Okay, anything else on this topic? Right. I'm going to move to end of year activities. I think we covered a lot of this, yeah. but um, was there anything specific uh, we've got in our agenda, the parade, um, you know, the expectations that you had outlined, uh, Annie, but also mm -hmm. just about um, the route. Uh, so folks who are um, wondering where is the graduation parade going, uh, that route is in the packet. And I know it's also um, available through the Hadley School's website, um, and I believe you linked to it in your email as well, Annie. Um, but yes, we would encourage folks who can get outside in a you know safe way to cheer on our graduates, uh, play a little pomp and circumstance as they go by, and um, just celebrate their graduation. So we're looking forward to that tomorrow afternoon, and I'm hold hoping the weather holds out. So yes. Nancy Fogarty of Hawkins Academy, the entire Hawkins Academy staff, but they, they, she has done an excellent job on the website. So what I would actually say to people, go to the Hopkins Academy website, Google Hopkins Academy, and right on the front page, you got the parade, you got the senior send off, you can link to the directions, much better than, than um, easier to navigate than my newsletter with pictures of the Zena's cows. So that's why we come. Can I make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. Um, by the way, the teachers parade was phenomenal mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and it was, it happened to be on a very cold day. Um, and we, the parade route didn't come in front of our house. So we had to stand at a corner and, and we waited for about an hour and a half. And I had a very disgruntled sixth grader um, who was anyways, that's a whole nother story. Um, <laughs> um but actually, my, my good friend Corey Feltovic had a great idea, and that was if, um, and we didn't follow through on it, but now with the heat and people waiting in the sun, I wonder whether a uh, senior or a parent might serve as a volunteer to um, put on their, you know, their uh, fi you know, sort of their find my iPhone or make visible your location just for the parade route. It was a very long amount of time, and, and but if, if we know and can share the location of, say, Andrea Elson, who's in the parade <laughs> with her daughter, then we can kind of track where in town uh, the, the entire caravan is. Um, so if there is a volunteer, maybe they can contact me and we can figure out a way, and then I can get that information to Annie so that we can put it on the website along with the parade details. That's a great yeah. idea. I don't know how to I do that. Think about the best I, think it's great idea. I, I volunteer to figure it out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. 
Um, we've also, uh, I just want to make sure we know, at Andrea, you've sent in a question about um, if we could just address whether we know this now, Annie, or if you can follow up yeah. after this meeting about in terms of a timeline, when should we expect seniors will have a date by which they will be able to give their feedback for graduation plans. Um, you talked about um, soliciting their feedback. So uh, maybe Brian has, uh, Mr. Beck has already uh, established what that time frame is for feedback, but if we could get make sure that folks are aware of that, unless you want to speak to that now. I, I'm, I shouldn't do this because I might be uh, over promising and under delivering, but I don't think I am. I think I think Mr. Beck is is going to get through signposting and chalking out the comments tomorrow morning and decorating and whatever else he's doing. And that the survey requesting feedback, if if students aren't seeing it tomorrow, I know they'll see it this weekend. Um, and we will request a very tight timeline. Um, so he will email parents to say to parents, please get your child to fill this out and um, all of them will yeah. get it. But yeah, we wanna go as quickly as we can. I just know tomorrow morning he'll be, he'll be parading. And if for whatever reason a senior doesn't receive it or a parent doesn't think their senior has received it, please reach out to us yeah. uh, and we'll make sure that it you know, went to the correct email address mm -hmm. and, and such. We just wanna make sure we get that, that, that out. All right. Now we've got uh, oh, a fun activity. Acceptance of Board of Trustees Athletics Fields donation. Paul, do you want to speak to this so I don't misspeak in terms misspeak of their donation? donation? No, go ahead, Annie. I think it's okay. Annie, you're muted. Annie, you're muted. We would like to thank the Hadley Board, like of the Hadley Board of Trustees um, for their incredible uh, their generosity, generosity to our fields, our fields project. Hadley, Hadley Board of Trustees. Board of Trustees. You're exactly right. Paul, exactly right. uh, can you mute, please? We're just getting some uh, feedback you? on your line in your cavernous room. Um, you know, Chris, I'm going to ask you, so I don't misspeak on the figure. Uh, Chris, yes, can you uh, Thank you. It's 100, I know this right at the top of my head, actually. It's $117,320. So thank you to that 117,300. Say that one more time, Chris, so I can get it. $320. $320. So thank you very, very much for, to the Hadley Board of Trustees, to everyone who's donated to this project. Uh, every donation mattered. Every donation made a difference. Thank you so much for your support. We know that businesses like East Hampton Savings Bank donated, but private citizens, I mean, every little bit mattered. So thank you. And this gesture from the Hadley Board of Trustees actually got us over the, I was going to say the finish line, but the starting line. This is phase one. So it got us over the starting line. In the absence of their generosity, this could not happen. Of course, we thank the uh, Community Preservation Act Committee in town as well. Without their work, this couldn't happen. So because this is a donation, the school committee has to accept the donation, and that does require a motion and a vote. I'd like to also say thank you very much. Um, this project has been uh, I feel like it's been on our agendas for many, many, many years, and uh, it's great to see uh, just the the support and um, the backing behind it. And I know a little bit later in the agenda, we'll have an update on progress and next steps and such. But thank you very much for the the financial support. It's really helped uh, get us going here. So, um, any other comments before I uh, ask for a vote? Ask for a vote. Yeah, Heather, this is Paul, just to chime in, just to say thank you to the, the trustees. Not only, obviously, incredibly generous uh, financially, they've just been strong backers. We, I've met with them several times. They're very engaged, very thoughtful, everybody, very thoughtful comments on how it should be designed. And, and I think folks remember the trustees were influential in getting the, the, the land originally purchased years and years ago. So really, from start to finish, they've been... Uh, a key member of this whole thing and with other funds we couldn't have gotten it done but as andy said it's it's really taken the community at least Ham the Sampton savings bank has been incredibly generous you know private individuals have been donated i just want to say this project obviously uh, as maybe all of these projects do is taken a lot longer 
than we had thought. And so, we're, as you say, well, we're going to look to break ground this summer. Uh, we definitely have plans for something when we can all get back together to acknowledge everybody who's donated. We have plans to have uh, acknowledgement on this, this site as well. So please know that we haven't forgotten about all the, the fabulous donors and they will be acknowledged. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, and I make a motion to, to accept the donation. Second There's that motion. Second. All right, all in favor. All in Hi. 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 Thank Great. you. Yes, thank you. All right, and our final presentation item um, is a suggestion regarding the request um, of donations for Chromebooks from the public. And there is an enclosure. Um, yes. We have a letter. Yes, so just to remind folks that Paul Benjamin, who's a Hadley resident and a, I believe, newly elected uh, member of the Finance Committee for Hadley, very, generously through his company purchased Chromebooks for the school department as realizing how dependent we've become on these in this remote learning environment. So he sent a letter that I said I would bring to the school committee. Um, and he says, I would like to suggest that you let the public know how important these are for the students and how many of them are needed. I believe that a story in the press would generate additional purchase or donations by other members of the public the Dell rep has said that he will honor the price I paid um, for as many donations as we receive. If we are successful, we could also save the town budget um, on the IT item. So I wanted to, uh, before going out and making requests for donations, I wanted that to come from the school committee and their thoughts on that. But I do want to say again, thank you so much to Paul Benjamin and the Benjamin Company for their donation to the schools. Well, I'll say I think it's a great idea, but I know Humera, as somebody who spearheaded our technology effort, uh, what are your thoughts on trying to get some more Chromebooks in the door? I think um, if they're, I mean, we are so lucky that we were imagining a one-to-one -one situation back in 2012, I think. Um, it was early days and it was like unimaginable at the time but we are close. And I think that if we have, can tap into an appetite to donate um, on the part of businesses, and uh, we should definitely do that because our town has put in um, uh, a disproportionate investment in technology relative to other towns and other communities across the state, wisely so, I think. We're seeing the, the return on that investment now with our teachers being ready to go. Um, but if we can tap into that momentum, we definitely should. Yeah, agreed. I think, and Paul Benjamin has offered to help support um, providing this Dell uh, rep, you know, as a contact who would honor the same price. Um, so, you know, what have we got to lose? Let's try it. I think, you know, thank you, Paul, for offering. And I think it's, that's a great idea. Okay, I'll move ahead with that. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, this is Paul, just to chime in, uh, obviously, I think it's a great idea. Um, and the more we could clarify, sort of trying to get to that one-to-one -one, uh, level that Humera said, and, you know, where are we in regards to that? And, and the, then IT maybe that yeah. the, the IT article, yeah. Paul, uh, would, would actually get us there, grades 3 through 12 with Chromebooks. We are not convinced at this point that um, Chromebooks are the best one-to-one -one option for pre-K through two. There's still a discussion with that. And uh, Chris, you may, you, and I don't expect you to have it in front of you because I don't have it in front of me, but I feel like we needed, uh, I'm gonna misquote it, but it's it's it, it's fewer than, I feel like it was fewer than 100. Do you, I'm thinking 90. 90. I think it was 50 and 40 is what we 50 needed. 50 and 40, okay, yeah. Well, was kind of close with fewer than 100, but yes, fewer than 100 that we needed, we need to get there. So that's a good point, Paul, that if people see, like we're this close to one-to-one -one grades three through 12. That that right, and each one is X number of dollars. And mm -hmm. so that sort of connection, if I spent, if I donated this much, I'd be contributing yeah. a computer. Or a computer. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Well, and just to add too, I mean, um, we have been so fortunate for, you know, all of the donors along the way, including, you know, the Helping Hearts group, which unfortunately they had to cancel their race this year. And so I don't know what kind of uh, 
impact. You know, we're, we may be missing them this year in terms mm -hmm. of how they can support since they weren't able to put on their event this past um, April, unfortunately. So, you know, anything like this, this kind of initiative, you know, uh, the, the ticker down from, you know, 50 and 40 <laughs> down to zero would be incredible. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, Annie, I know this is kind of a, a, this is related to a topic before we move to reorganization of the committee. Um, it, it, we were talking about the board of trustees and it just, it made, it prompted me to think about as part of graduation and Humera said, you know, we, we have all participated in those graduation ceremonies, mm -hmm. taking hands of the seniors and just getting to really wish them well um, and congratulate them. But uh, a part of that whole ceremony has been the awarding of um, scholarships, many of which are from the board of trustees. Uh, and my question would be for you in our thinking about graduation planning and senior send off. Um, how that may be incorporated. How can we celebrate um, our class and, um, you know, the generosity of the community, um, the memory of many of those folks who are named in those uh, memorial scholarships mm -hmm. and the awarding of them, um, whether that's a program that's available online or how that's communicated. I'd just like that to be added to the list. Yeah. If I may also uh, um, second that suggestion, um, I'm a big fan of um, Zoom meetings. I know we're all Zoomed out, but, um, we're, and we're historically used to doing all those things on one night, but um, there's nothing that says that we couldn't break those things out and to have a live honoring um, in, by way of a Zoom uh, call that's recorded and then shared. Um, so I encourage us to think of the ways that we can um, honor those relationships and also really lift up the students that deserve to be lifted up um, using those kinds of mechanisms. Yeah, thank you, Humera. Perfect. Okay, sorry to digress. That's just you know, going back to a topic I'm adding. All right, moving on. Uh, topic five, reorganization of the committee. Um, so this is always that fun time of year. I kind of previewed it last time we met where we look at uh, all of the subcommittees that we have, appointments to committees, uh, who gets to sign bills and payrolls, who's the chair and the vice chair, all of that stuff. Um, and so we're going to go through each of these. And um, Ethan, I tried to give you a preview last time, but if you have any questions about what these groups do, or for any of us, if you haven't served on one of the committees and want to know, what am I signing up for here if I volunteer? Just, just ask. Uh, I hope that this is an open dialogue as we, you know, kind of um, reestablish, which we've done every year, uh, to give everybody a chance to work on different aspects of um, what our um, school committee role and function allows us to be involved in and it gives us the opportunity to perhaps be involved in something that maybe we hadn't been involved in before and we're very much interested in taking it on. Um, so let's see, I think uh, we're gonna start with 5A, the election of chairperson. So typically if, uh, I'd love to hear from folks as to your thoughts, whether you are um, would like to nominate somebody or how you would like to envision our next year. So I'd like to speak up and I personally, I, I feel Heather, you've done a really great job taking over chair for the past few years. And I would like to nominate you to continue if it's something you're willing doing. I feel like you have very organized and um, really good at heading up the meetings and communicating with everybody. I think strongly you. support that. Thank you, Humera. I, I am interested in it and I'm here. I got nowhere else to go. <laughs> 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 and would be interested um, in continuing on. Great, thanks, Heather. You're doing a great job. Thank you. I appreciate you. Well, I will uh, take that as a vote of confidence, at least in the last year. So <laughs> here we go. We'll do it. I think we should make Ethan do it. <laughs> we should require the new guy. What, what do I need to do? What do yeah. I need? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You shouldn't so be the you, chair just yet. Get it in six months. There you go. <laughs> that's, that's right. All right. So you, so, you have a motion and a second for the election of chairperson. 
to have a motion. I have a motion from Tara and a second from Humera. And your vote. That's for Heather's chairperson. So aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Perfect. Aye. I guess I can vote. Yes, you can vote for yourself. All right. I will. Thank you. I appreciate it. Looking forward to working with you all again for another year. All right, we're going to move on then to the election of the vice chair slash secretary for those times when we need somebody else to take minutes. I'd like to nominate um, Paul Pfeiffer for the role. Um, I think you've done a great job as vice chair um, this uh, these last cycles. And uh, I especially admire the way that you have led the effort almost over the finish line for the fields. That was, um, gosh, I never imagined that we would never be there. Imagined so would be there. thank you for doing that thank and for doing, doing that and doing what you're doing. Doing what you're doing. Thanks, Sumeran. That's nice to you. Definitely a team effort. Thanks. Well, it's easy to be vice chair when Heather's the chair. So happily, I'll do it. Yes, as long as Heather's the chair, she's great. I might miss a few meetings, you know, just to. <laughs> yeah. Where are you going to go? Come yeah. on. <laughs> no, I, I support um, Humera, everything that you said with that. I've appreciated your support, Paul, and being able to um, really, you know, rely on all of you in working through these uh, topics very professionally and cordially. And I think um, we all work well together. And so. Paul, um, I would support you as vice chair as well. So Is there a motion? Yeah. Motion to um, nominate Paul Pfeiffer as vice chair. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Congratulations. Yay, thanks. You win. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, appointment of the policy subcommittee. So um, we talked a little bit about this last time. And currently, let's see, it's Tara and Humera. That's right. And in fact, we just had a meeting um, at 4.30 and went through a whole set of new policies. And um, I think I, I can't speak for Tara, although I think I can because she mentioned she said it herself. We are <laughs> both in a groove um, in uh, and, and Zoom, these Zoom meetings honestly have been making it more uh, productive to quickly address and, and make our way through lots of policies. So I would be happy to volunteer to uh, keep moving forward on the policy. And I echo, I would like to keep moving forward too. I do, I do feel like we've got a really good groove going on right now. Why well, I, I, for I one, just I, no, go yeah. ahead. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to chime in to say awesome. And thank you both for doing this. And it's, it's not glamorous work uh, yet. It's, it's, it's super important. And it's one of those that you don't know how important it is until you need the policy and you look at it. And if, if it isn't relevant and germane and up to date, then it really makes things difficult. So thank you. It's important. So I support you all. Thank you. I agree. I support you guys in that. I'm appreciative of the work. We've been there doing it <laughs> before. So definitely. And it will be interesting to see what impact, if any, you know, next year and COVID and remote learning and policy around that we'll have on district policies. So stay tuned. All right, great. Uh, is there a motion or is this something we need to vote on? No, you can appoint on this. So the other ones you can appoint and I'll also, I'll be the spoiler alert. The next ones that say committee, that's because we like to think there's a lot of people on the school committee. They're actually liaisons. It's only one person because we just Got don't it. have that many bodies. <laughs> I mean, unless you all want to start doing multiples. But. No, that's okay. So, all right. Congratulations, Humera and Tara. You have been appointed. Uh, thank you for continuing your work on the policy subcommittee. All right. Appointment of finance committee. Uh, so that's the liaison. Uh, I, I have served in that role uh, in terms of representing when I can at the tri board um, and alongside Annie and Chris with the budget discussions and capital planning and all of that. I am happy to continue on, but I think if any one of you were interested in it, um, I'm happy to also pass the torch. It's, uh, it is definitely um, educational in terms of uh, not only representing the schools from the finance perspective, but as I was saying to Jane earlier, 
hearing, you know, from uh, finance committee and the select board about the initiatives of the town and how we fit into that, how um, everybody needs to fit into uh, what the town has. So it, I find it um, very informative and useful. And I'm happy to continue on, but uh, would anybody else be just rearing to go to be in that, that role? Thank you, Heather. I appreciate you doing that. All right, I will continue on then if that's that sounds okay. Thanks. Happy, Heather. happy to I do. Wanna, it. I, I know. I, I know you're willing. I know. I also noticed that Ethan took himself off mute, and I. I, uh, <laughs> I, I just wanted to make sure. It no, is a I was just. I, I was just going to say I'm happy to to take on uh, whatever subcommittee committee you guys want to shove my way. Um, you guys have all been doing this for a little while and, and obviously have experience in these committees. And if there's something that you just want to take a break from or, um, you know, something you just want to sh uh, slide my way, I'm happy to do it. Definitely. And we, and we want to make sure that you have something that you feel like you're representing and moving forward and, um, you know, reporting out on and owning. Cause it's, it's really, it's good to have that, uh, piece. Um, because each one of us, you know, have those pieces. So it does finance committee interest you? I mean, all things school, school interests me. And if you're, if you're, if you feel gung ho about staying with uh, finance, please go for it. But if you want to pass it along, I'm happy to do it. I would be happy to pass it. And right. at times I tend to attend anyways. So um, I, that's one where we try not to have three of us attend. So there's a, not a quorum. <laughs> but usually it's two or one. I know Tara, you've attended um, a number of times in my absence as well. So, Ethan, would you like to be appointed the uh, <laughs> the liaison to the finance committee? Sure, sounds great. Okay, I have to say that's fantastic. Brand new committee member, tri board meeting next Wednesday. Most challenging budget ever. That's <laughs> I'm here for Ethan. it. <laughs> Wednesday five <laughs> thirty. Perfect. Sounds right. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much, Ethan, and uh, congratulations. <laughs> okay, we're going to move then to the appointment of capital planning subcommittee. Um, capital planning subcommittee, I think that's, has that historically been Paul with the fields? Mm -hmm. Yep. And we just lost Paul. We just just lost, Paul. He lost his video. Yeah. He's Poor connection, but yeah, I'm happy to still continue on the capital planning. I want to see this through. Um, yeah, so thank you. Sounds great. Thanks, Thank you. Great. Paul. Thank you. Folks, are okay with that? Yeah. Folks, are okay with that? Thank yeah. you. Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. And then the appointment okay, of the collaborative services collaborative representative. representative. Currently, that's Humera. And I'd love to continue to serve. I'm learning a lot and I feel like I'm contributing there as well. I would strongly support that. I think it's great that you're uh, serving in that role. And I think that it's been really helpful hearing about your experiences and the information that they've shared. Thanks. Okay. And then finally, our favorite signers for bills and payroll. So the way that this works is Back in the days, we used to have to go in the office and we had a key and we'd go through this stack of bills and then we'd sign the, the cover and payroll every week. We'd go and sign it. But we are now in the digital era and everything's online. So that's great. Um, Chris sends us these lovely emails. Actually, his system pings you and says a PDF is ready for your digital signature Everything is there. You can scroll through it. You can review it. You can uh, sign it digitally, uh, and it travels through um, the online system to get approved so that people can get paid and the bills can get paid. Um, it is something that requires you know, regular attention in terms of however you do it, every Friday, every Wednesday, whenever it comes through, um, but making sure that it gets a timely review and processing so that bills can get paid and teachers can support and staff can get paid. Um, so currently, who are our signers? Just me. Oh, do you guys know? Just you, okay. Just me. Just you, right. 
That's right. And was Keith a signer? Him and he... Humera were, right? But we changed uh, it. We yeah. went down to one. I if haven't been one for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chris, did you want to chime in? Chris, you can keep track of this better than I can. Yeah, um, it, it was very difficult to get three signatures. Um, and so I think it was maybe a year or so ago that we switched to just one signer, which is uh, Tara. And uh, kudos to Tara. She's been doing great. So, uh, you know, it's important to keep these signed on a regular basis because the town won't uh, write the checks until we get all of the signatures. So if it lags behind, then what happens is, you know, the bills don't get paid. So just wanted to shout out a thank you for Tara to, uh, uh, for uh, signing these on a regular basis. It really makes my job a heck of a lot easier. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, Would Tara. you like to continue doing that <laughs> or should we seek out other uh, people? I'm happy to, unless somebody is just really like raring and ready to sign these, I'm happy to continue it. I would, uh, you know, I would definitely, you know, go ahead, Paul. I was just gonna say one thought, if Ethan's looking for something, it's a good way to understand the budget. I, you know, when we would go in and sign those, looking through it, you, you see how the, the school is spending money every month. It's, it's, it's a very informative. I yeah. found it especially informative. I found it to be a little bit of a, a pain in the, you know what, after six years. Um, but I, I have to say that it gave you great insight into the details that roll up into the budget. I would agree. And I think, um, it, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but Ethan would still have access to this. Um, he could go in, but you may not require him as a signer. Is that true? That's correct. Um, I actually have to add his email address to the system and take Keith's out. But what happens is I send it to Anne. Currently, I send it to Anne and Tara as signers and to everybody else as reviewers. Um, so everybody can still look at it. We only have the superintendent and one school committee member signed. Right. So I, I would be supportive if, if this sounds okay, whether, you know, if Tara can continue on, Ethan, I would love for you to get in there, look at them. You can scroll through them because just exactly what Paul and Humera were saying, back when we had to have three signers, we were all in there. And basically it shows you what do we spend on? Well, it's the breakdown of the, you're going to see it in the budget. What are we paying out to, you know, uh, substitutes, uh, paying for oil, paying for, you know, the services that we have at the facilities. Um, and then with payroll, also just considerations around that when um, talking about contracts and length and year round versus just however many months it is, eight. So it, it is an interesting thing to look through. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm in. So does that sound okay, Tara, to have you as the signer, but um, encourage Ethan to go in and review them just to take a look? Yeah. And ask those questions, good. please. <laughs> okay. All right. We will do that then. Um, so do we, I, I'm seeing six slots here. It sounds like we really just have. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. sorry. I didn't update it. That's from how, the old way that we used to do it. Yeah, and I no, just that's fine. copied over the reorg. Yeah. And I think any one of us would be happy to serve as an alternate. Chris, I know you've pinged me when you need something quick uh, signed. So not a problem. All right. Um, I think that is everything with the reorganization of the committee. Yeah. Did we miss anything? No, you guys are officially reorganized. Good. We are reorganized. You look, you look great, too. You look new, refreshed. <laughs> Hollywood Squares. Okay, moving on. Business manager reports. Chris, it's your show. Okay. Um, so there are three reports in your meeting package. The first would be the expense summary. Um, you know, basically at this point in time of the school year, even if it even in a normal school year, uh, we would be kind of closing out the current school year and, and looking, for, you know, toward the next one. Um, but primary focus right now is just closing out any purchase orders that might still be open where we have no more bills coming. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, on, on the expense report, if you look at the final page, it shows that we still have $305,000 encumbered. 
So that's the amount that we still have in open purchase orders. I just ran at the beginning of this meeting an open PO report, and there are several, actually more than several um, purchase orders that we can close out. And what that does is it reduces the encumbrance and it increases the available budget that we have to spend. So um, right now we have really just under a million dollars um, remaining to spend. And we have, I believe, one more pay, actually two more payrolls, um, with the final one being the big payroll, um, where those who get their pays throughout the summer get the last payroll and then four additional ones. Um, that would take up pretty much, um, it, it would actually take up more than what we have available. But we also have um, additional money in school choice, I believe another, $275,000 in school choice that we have not yet used, as well as some additional transfers of expenses to Circuit Breaker. Um, you know, Circuit Breaker is one of those items we can't carry over as much as we want. It, we're limited to how much. So I will be doing a transfer to there as well. And then um, I, this is kind of a segue, I guess, into the revolving accounts report, but it's tied into this one as well. Um, I'm also going to have to move some of the expenses both from food services and from the preschool program into the general fund. Uh, I opened up an account. We had an account already for the food services director's salary, but even if I move her entire salary into the budget, I don't think it's going to cover the loss that we're going to uh, show by the end of the year. And that's basically a result of the fact that, you know, we've been paying people their salaries and we've been serving meals, but there really has been very, very little revenue coming in. Um, so, you know, it, it may sound like we have a lot of money, but a good portion of that is going to go into food services and, um, and preschool revolving as well. But I, I, I have to be honest, uh, you know, I think only once I told you guys that um, it was a few years ago that, boy, this budget is tight. Um, I, I am not nervous at all about this budget. We will uh, you know, finish up right where we expect to with, with no problems. That's great. And Chris, it was interesting. I saw this um, on the, the school committee, the Massachusetts Association of School Committees has a listserv that, um, so it's all school committee members from throughout the state and somebody had posed the question about a rumor that they had heard that uh, schools would not have to turn back to the town at the end of the year any unspent money. That is a rumor, correct? That's it what is I a rumor, yes. yes. Um, yeah, I mean, we typically run the budget pretty much down to zero every year, but um, yeah, that's, I've heard nothing about that, that's for sure, and, and I really don't anticipate that uh, something like that would Right. So anything that is unspent at the end of the fiscal year gets turned back to the town. That's correct. Yes. Yep. Great. Uh, and hey, Chris, can I ask you? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, first off, thanks for just always saying that. I like you got all the time. So, um, but the, I think we talked about this last time. Can you remind me the fuel oil or the propane? Why are we even close on some of those things? Maybe the fuel oil was contracted, and so that was a set price. But is that right? Our telephone, you know, why are we over on some of these things? Um, <clears throat> oh, I just had to make sure I wasn't muted. Um, some of the items, like fuel oils, for example, um, I know that we, you know, we pre-buy a certain number of gallons of oil, um, and basically we have to use all that up by the end of june or else they start charging us a storage fee for any remaining gallons so we always make sure um to top off the tanks and and you know use up all of that oil last year it was uh, i mean let me try to rephrase this this past winter was a warm winter so we didn't use a lot of oil or not as much as usual but the winter before was much colder and we actually used much more oil last year than we had budgeted or than, that we had purchased. So as a result of just, you know, the amount of oil that we used and our financial condition, 
we weren't able to say spend an extra twenty thousand dollars to top off the oil tanks at the end of the school year so they weren't full going into say september october like they often are that meant that this year we had to buy additional oil just to kind of prop those uh, levels up to where we usually start a school year at um things like the telephone if you remember it was quite a while ago we bought a new phone system um, for the school district, but we did have to kind of have a, an overlap where um, you know we we kind of still retained a backup just in case things didn't um, cross over to the new system um, as we had hoped it would. Um, we still have the elementary school as well that we need to um, get online with the new phone system. So um, right now we're kind of running two. Um, and that could account for, you know, um, the overages on the phone system. Part of it may also be the fact, and, and when I was going through this open purchase order report, when it shows on your report that there are um, overages in the budget, part of that might have to do with the encumbered amounts and these open purchase orders, which may be higher than they need to be. Um, I did send our bookkeeper an email during the meeting tonight with that report asking him if we could just take a look at the number of bills remaining and, and you know an average bill amount and to just reduce those encumbrances down to uh, basically the May and Ju June bills remaining. So things get tightened up a lot more as you know as we get into June. Um, but that's that's the reason why some of these account lines are over. Okay, great. Just one final question. So on the heating maintenance we went over there, it looks like. And is that the those heating vents that we were seeking to replace? We did have some repairs uh, to those heating vents, and we basically do every year. Yeah, those are uh, just in rough shape. You know, as, uh, I remember the presentation we had where we took some pictures of disconnected pipes and tubes and stuff that there are just no parts available anymore. So as a result of that, yeah, our, uh, our heating budget or our heating repair budget basically uh, either always gets used or goes over um, just because there's always an issue going on with them. We also had a boiler issue this year as well that needed to be fixed, but a good portion of it are right. return events, yeah. We did submit, uh, we did submit MSBA uh, application again for the heating vents. And so that would, we would find out typically in December, we'll see, I don't know if that timeline will change because of COVID. Any more questions on the uh, first budget report? Nope. Okay, if we could just jump to the grant report next, I think that might be next in your package. Um, so just as uh, the same as the um, general budget, we're kind of winding down with the grants as well. Uh, you can see that a good portion of them are pretty much fully spent. A couple of them have very small amounts remaining, like the Title IIA, uh, the 140 grant. That's really just the MTRS payment that we make at the end of June. So that's fully spent. Um, you know, the 240 SPED grant, that's fully spent. Um, some of these grants are going to be carried over into next year uh, because, you know, with the closing of um, the schools in March, some of the items that we had planned on spending with these grants were unable to happen. And uh, you know, DESE has been very good about allowing these grants to just carry over into next year. So um, it's, it's a typical thing that we spend every dime of these grants down by June 30th, but there are a couple that are gonna carry over into next year. Um, Safer Schools and Communities Grant down near the bottom. Um, we just got the check for that the other day, finally. Um, and that was used, uh, a lot of it was used to get the key fob entry systems that we're uh, kind of just setting up now. Um, we have to, we, we have them installed where uh, from now on we won't have keys, we will have the key fobs that people can enter the buildings with. Uh, the nice thing about those is that we can create rules where, you know, people are allowed into their building, but not necessarily into every building. Um, and there's a timeline, you know, they, they can, and I'm just kind of making this up, but a teacher could maybe get in between seven in the morning and five at night. Um, it's also very nice because 
we don't have to worry about chasing down keys. Say if somebody leaves the district or if somebody retires or something and, oh, gee, we never got the key from them. You know, um, now we just know we go into the computer and we just shut off access. So it's, it's really a security item um, as well. And some other uh, things that we did with that money were to replace a few more of the water fountains in the school to uh, get lead free uh, units in the buildings. Um, so that was a, a great little grant to pick up because the money really went far. Uh, so we did some good things with it. That's great. Right. Any questions on the grants? No. I just let the school committee know we submitted, uh, you see on this page 461, that was the early college planning grants that we received. Um, and then this week, I submitted 462 for fiscal year 21, which is early college implementation. They invited us to apply, even though they haven't officially announced um, early college designations, but they did invite us to apply. We submitted that with Greenfield Community College for just over $66,000. We should hear about that sometime in the summertime. That's great. And hopefully hear about our early college designation within the next couple of weeks. And I, I know, Annie, you've mentioned what that is, um, but I suspect that there'll be many viewers. I wonder if you wouldn't mind just like recapping what that is. So not to be confused with innovation pathway. So just very quickly, we do have a vision where learning becomes far more engaging and relevant for students at Hopkins Academy. We have received from the governor's office designations for two innovation pathways. One of them is business and finance and the other one is life and environmental science. In the innovation pathway, students take, a uh, cohort of students take carefully articulated coursework, sequenced coursework um, that is college level and uh, technical, provides them with technical skills, and they complete a 100 hour internship in their field of interest. Those are innovation pathways. Early college, high school, students who are interested in that they would be accepted into a cohort. At the conclusion, they would receive, they would have earned a minimum of 12 college credits. We have identified courses that are mass transfer courses or that are what are called A to B map courses. So courses, not every single one of them, but several of them would be associates to bachelor's mapped courses in um, <clears throat> public colleges and universities in Massachusetts. Those students uh, in that, in, in early college, there's a, an option for a liberal arts kind of focus, like students might be thinking liberal arts transfer or also a STEM focus. Next year, we will look to apply for a third innovation designation in health sciences. So our students who are very interested in health, uh, health and life sciences, I mean, with life and environmental, but the health professions, uh, we are also looking into either through early college high school or, or somehow uh, create our kind of public safety pathway. So to build off of what we have now, the public safety course that Emma, who was on the call with us, that Emma Elson is in, she's doing a bang up job. And she's constantly at the fire station. We've had many other students, Gage uh, Spanknable and um H. Banknable and um, Higgins, Liam Higgins, thank you, and Liam, uh, and others, many other students. So um, we are looking to also um, kind of create pathways in public safety and pathways in uh, health, in health professions. Thank you. I just want to underscore that it, these are very competitive opportunities, and it's it seems unlikely that a town of our size, serving as many students as we do, could um, qualify for this. Um, but uh, it's been the leadership, I think, of the faculty along with you, mm -hmm. Annie. And I'm, um, you know, we we did earn a grant to go out and see uh, um, tour award-winning schools in San Diego. And what we learned as a team was that uh, what they were doing there is. Uh, entirely along the lines of what we're planning uh, with mm -hmm. these programs. So it's exciting that this all, all is coming together. Yeah, it is. Would have been nice to make the announcements if we were all together. Like it's kind of a <laughs> bit of a letdown to just put them in the weekly email, but it's all happening. We will, it's all happening. All good things. 
You know, I think it should be mentioned, if you look at the grant report, um, basically we have these grants that we get every year and they basically run from the second grant, the 140 grant, down to the 391 grant, which actually the 391 is going away this year, but those were the grants that we got every year. Um, the 104 grant at the top and then the one, two, three, four, five of them at the bottom are all new grants uh, that we've gotten. And that really is um, is just a, a testament for um, you know, Anne's um, grant writing abilities. Um, she is really a, a lean, mean grant writing machine. And uh, <laughs> apparently um, we were talking about it one day in the central office and uh, Sue Giza um, gave her the nickname of Million Dollar Mackenzie. So I um, <laughs> guess we're working our way toward that. But I mean, you know, it really is just amazing when you look at the number of grants that are new on this grant report versus what we've uh, you know, normally gotten. It's, it's really a big deal and it makes a big difference to the district. Not an so easy task. Nice. And also just to double click on the fact that our educators are out of the box thinkers who are able to imagine some new possibilities and commit to um, bringing those to life. And that's, that does not happen everywhere. And I just wanna commend our educators for yeah. Partnering with us to make that happen. Agreed. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Agreed. Um, and the final report we have are the revolving accounts report. Um, if you look at that, you see the athletic revolving, which looks like just a huge balance in there, but um, there's $17,300 in athletic fields funds as well that's included in that. Those were the items that we received um, donations for. There's still actually twenty dollars out there um, that Helping Hearts they were they were collecting the funds for us and they just held that final twenty dollars uh, just to keep some money in that account until we knew that there were no more uh, donations coming in. So we'll reach out and get that the final twenty dollars from them. But um, you know, so still we we have around seventeen thousand dollars in the athletic revolving. That's still I mean I'm sorry twelve thousand dollars, which is still you know, a very good balance. It's uh, more than we had at the beginning of the year. Uh, so it's always nice with that. Uh, lunch account, you can see on April 30th was in the negative. It's obviously going to continue getting further into the negative um, through May and June. Uh, what I'm thinking of is we're probably going to be putting in anywhere from 30 to $40,000 into that um, account to bring it back up into the positive. And preschool revolving is still $8,700 at the end of April, but that is now also um, going to decrease. And it's not just decreasing because of the uh, payrolls that we're paying, but also because we refunded a lot of the uh, payments that people had made in advance. And so those were processed just this past week, actually. So um, that, that number as well is going to drop pretty quickly. Um, student activity, I, I, um, I got that after the report was due, so unfortunately it's not included. It's, it's similar uh, in balance to what we had at the end of March. There really obviously wasn't a heck of a lot of activities going on in April, so that really didn't move much. And that school choice amount, you can see $952,000, but as we know, that will drop down um, in June when we uh, utilize the funds that we budgeted. Uh, to, you know, to zero out the budget, so um, you know basically we're we're in good shape with these accounts as well. Once once we transfer expenses out of lunch and preschool, can you remind me? I forget when we started talking about Hadley kids. Um, there was going to be a revolving account created for them. Where are we with Hadley kids Just for after school? Yeah, for the after school. Yes. Yeah, we do have the revolving account. The funds had been transferred over from um, Park and Rec to uh, the, you know, the revolving account that's now in the school accounts. I believe the amount was a little over $70,000 that was transferred. Um, and there was also the gift account that has not been transferred yet. I, I guess they were just kind of double checking uh, from the board at Hadley Kids to make sure that it was really supposed to go to us. Um, which, you know, it was voted at town meeting, but uh, we have a new town accountant and she's not aware of all these things that have been going on. So she's kind of double checking before she just does the transfers, but it will be done shortly. 
And will we see, will that be added to our reports? I can add it, no problem yeah. if you'd like it, sure. Yeah, and I can tell you that I think, because this is another place where obviously we're not uh, getting revenue and there are still some expenses in that. And I think our best estimates right now, even with refunds and everything we've accounted for, we are projecting to end in the black, not as not to the extent that we would have if we still had students in there, but it will um, it will end in the black. <clears throat> I'm going to say it, Chris, unlike the lunch account, but it will end in the black. <laughs> you had to get that in there. I did. I did. All I'd right. be surprised, Chris, to say, just wait, the, you know, the lunch money, it'll update. It'll be fine. Just wait. It will. Yeah. It'll be negative a million when I have to present it. When I have to present. <laughs> just wait. I will be away for a couple of weeks in the yes. summer. And if school committee is during that week, I will make sure to transfer some money out of the lunch account yes. temporarily. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> when she reports it, yeah, it will show a negative balance. All right, Chris, anything else for today? I have nothing else, no. All right. Let's see, Thank we you. have public comment on here again. Um, I think we only intended to do that once. I'm gonna move on to school committee reports and discussion. So policy, you guys just met. So we just met today before school committee meeting and um, did our first reading of some policies and those will be in the next packet at the school committee meeting for review. Great. All right. Um, finance tri board. So it sounds like we're meeting uh, Wednesday the third, mm -hmm. not Friday. Not Friday. Yeah. Friday. Perfect. Wednesday the third. And we haven't. I haven't participated in a meeting since the last time we met as a committee. Um, Annie, has there been anything that I may have missed on that? We we have had a meeting, and um, shucks, if I'm missing something big. Even Jane can help us here, but uh, I I know that the town is working furiously to try to figure out how they can get into FY21 with um, as strong as possible, but I, nothing is coming to me. I know we've met since then, but uh, I think it's yeah. still a work in progress in terms well, of I the know, FY21 budget. Yeah, and the last time we met, you know, they were talking about impacts such as um, you know, with not having college graduations and the reduction mm -hmm. in uh, the meals tax and um, income that was expected as some of those large events, uh, that they were still, I think, at that time modeling what that might mean for mm -hmm. uh, budget impact. Um, so, yeah, I think stay tuned. Jane did unmute, so maybe Jane can, yeah, <laughs> she can, her memory is better than mine. So yes, the town is, is suffering a serious loss of revenue from meal tax and room tax, somewhere between $800,000. That's mm -hmm. the number currently being said, but there's no real, till the numbers come in at the end of the quarter, mm -hmm. there isn't any information. Yep. One, of, one of the things I know is um, a lot of the hotels pay a lot of their bills, they've made arrangements with the collector, to coincide with when they get all that income from students and parents coming into town. They're mm -hmm. also, well, currently now, um, permits requests are going up, which is good news. Mm -hmm. And about a year and a half ago, the select board changed cost of permits. So there's a little more money there, so it covers itself. But yes, the town is tightening its belt and everybody in town is tightening their belt because Nobody planned for this, and we're all going to survive together. Thanks for that. All right. Um, and we'll look forward to having the uh, tri board meeting on the third. So, fields and CPA update, Paul. Yeah, thanks, Heather. Just a couple shout outs for us. Just wanted to thank Chris uh, Desjardins on the phone. Just he's been doing a great job shepherding through the the request for proposals, the, the whole bidding process. We've uh, got a, a contract we're just about ready to, to close on. We want uh, them to break ground. There's one little um, process procedure that just needs to be overcome. There's so many thousands of steps here. The uh, 
the CPA funds uh, need to be voted on again for an extension, even though we've expended a, a bit of them. Um, CPA asked that it go back to town meeting. So for the town to approve an extension, again, we've got a plan for how to spend this out. We've almost signed the contract. We want to break ground as soon as we can, next week if possible, right? But we have to sign this contract first. We have to get this uh, approval from town meeting. I am working with CPA uh, to see if we can have them just approve it without going to town meeting. But um, as of now, it's going to go to town meeting for approval. But Chris has been doing a great job shepherding. Not that's all through. That's the last step. We have the money in the bank, as we mentioned before. Those generous donations, including from the board of trustees and private individuals and East Hampton uh, Savings Bank. So we're ready to go, and that project's pretty exciting, right? We're going to uh, re redo a, a softball field or uh, Put in a new softball field, a new soccer multi-use field, and uh, a new redo the a JV baseball field. So it's a pretty elaborate project that's going to start this summer and it'll go uh, toward into the fall uh, and they'll plant grass then I think towards uh, September. And of course, it's going to be a good year or so before we will be able to really use those fields so you can let that grass grow. We will have irrigation there. So, and we will... Uh, an exciting aspect for the community. We'll have an asphalt track and that doesn't go all the way around because, as remember, this is a two phase project. So, for the first phase, it'll go about two thirds of the way around. So, it'll be a really exciting uh, thing that folks in the community can use. We can access during games, emergency vehicle access, ADA access. So, it's a really it's a great addition. Can't wait for it all to begin. So, um, and then uh, Another shout out to just to, to the folks at Helping Hearts, Stacy Reed in particular, just for helping to manage those private donations. They stepped forward and, and really did a great job. So thanks a lot to them. Uh, and then finally, we the town had also approved um, eleven thousand dollars to uh, update the driveway from Middle Street, the little curving driveway to Middle Street to, into the main parking lot. We're going to hold off doing that until after uh, the construction here, Chris mentioned the good point that it's no sense redoing that driveway and having a lot of construction vehicles drive over it all summer so it's definitely in the works we all know that needs to be redone and we have the money to do it it's just a matter of uh, being smart as to when we do it chris anything to add there we go sorry i was muted um no no i actually um yeah we're, we're basically ready to break ground and um you know, as soon as we can get that final signature on the contract, the, the one point we're just waiting on is the extension for the CPA funds. And once that's done, the town accountant can sign off that the funds are available and, and we're good to go. So um, that's there's really no more update than what Paul really said. No I guess. Than what Paul said I guess. And I keep, uh, you know, having these plans for some celebration. Obviously, COVID throws that in the works. But even so, I'm leery of celebrating uh, uh, lest I jinx where we are because just there everything that could be a challenge has come up with this project has and so but we're persevering and so we're, we're very very close and i'd like to thank the town too for the generous donations it, it had to approving twice donations from the cpa fund for this project i think it's gonna be really beneficial to the town and to the school i have to say really there has been some just tremendous uh, donations of funds uh, from from both the town, the trustees, and um, you know the the local businesses and individuals. I mean, it's just amazing the amount of money that we've been able to earmark for this project. Yeah, and we will definitely recognize folks appropriately when we get that chance. So thank you. That's great. It's really exciting. So it'll be fun to see kind of the first you know backhoe dig in and <laughs> pull up the ground. Perfect. All right, uh, and our last update, the collaborative, Humera. Great, thanks. Um, I attended a board meeting uh, yesterday and we had our annual executive directors review. We um, uh, got a report on all the different um, uh, services that they uh, provide and how those services have had to change during COVID. As you know, um, they have many grants from the state that require them to teach. Um, they run a high school at Mount Tom out of um, Holyoke Community College and have a juvenile justice um, education offering. Um, and they have a lot of um, human resources that they uh, uh, support, sizable budget. 
Um, they're providing a lot of professional development, especially along the lines of education in this um, COVID environment. Um, so they're doing important work and they're maintaining their organization. They were eligible for a payroll protection plan loan um, to the amount of 5825000 And um, that money will be spent um, over the next eight weeks from June 5th, 2020 to June 29th, 2020. Um, and there's a major loan forgiveness component to that loan, so up to 100% can be forgiven if the expenditures meet a certain criteria. A big one of those criteria is salary. Um, and so they're um, uh, looking forward to um, uh, applying, formalizing that application uh, with last night's approval at the board meeting. Um, I'll forward the most recent report to the rest of the school committee, along with any information on their upcoming professional development opportunities. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, our last set of items are just um, to round out our action items. So we do need to approve the accounts payable warrants that were submitted in April, 2020. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 I will abstain. Uh, we also have an approval of the payroll warrants submitted in April 2020. Is there a motion to approve? Yes, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We've got the April 27th, 2020 minutes. Were there any um, changes or uh, comments on those minutes? If not, I'll get a motion. Motion to approve motion to the April minutes. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Paul's got like the five second delay at his house. It's working its way across. Is, Hadley. is that right? Sorry, I, you know, I'm on the outskirts of Hadley, right? <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. We've got the first reading of policies. Um, and let's see, do we approve those? No, you're muted, Annie. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be thinking I can press a button when this is all over and nobody can hear me. And that's yeah. going to be ugly. Let me like tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, oh, that's right. I can't mute myself anymore. Uh, no, first reading is just first reading. Second reading, you'll vote. Okay. So first reading, FYI. Um, mm -hmm. All right. And let's see here. I lost my agenda. I think that was and we already voted to accept the donation from the Board of Trustees. So we are square on our action items. Uh, our next regular meeting next date, regular meeting date, typically that would have been looking, uh, what, the 20, is it the 22nd or the 29th? 4th is the 22nd. 4th is the 22nd. Yes, I would suggest yeah. possibly if people are okay with this, perhaps sending out, um, being a little flexible around that. So I'd like us to meet as close to when the guidance comes out from the state around re-entry as possible. So if it's okay for me to send out some options when I feel like I know that it's getting closer to that coming, that would be a really productive and important thing for us to talk about at a June school committee meeting. So can I send out an invitation with possibilities when I get, when I have a sense of when we're going to have that guidance in hand? I think that's a great idea. <laughs> no trouble <laughs> going on here. <laughs> Same here. And just so everybody knows, I had told Annie and Heather, um, I on Mondays and Tuesdays, I'm going to be working till 530. So I wouldn't be able to attend the meeting until six o'clock. I don't know if people can adjust to a six o'clock meeting or I can do any other day earlier, just Mondays and Tuesdays are I, I won't be available till six. Thanks, Tara. Yeah, let's, we'll keep that in mind which, whichever date we pick. Um, if we needed to hold it at starting at six, that's not a problem for me, but um, others should weigh in on that. 
when Annie sends availability. Annie sends mm-hmm. Absolutely. And if I if I could just um, mention that other days of the week are absolutely fine uh, for for from my perspective. I, I think you know we're on Zoom meetings all day long, so uh, anything we can do to get out at eight rather than nine uh, is welcomed. Yeah. Sounds good. And with that, we will round out this meeting and end at 7.35. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 I'd like to thank folks for uh, showing up and listening in and uh, appreciate everybody's comments. So thank you. Thank and you. See you all soon. Thanks, everyone. Soon. You guys. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Good night, guys. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you.